When was the last time you turned off all of your electronic devices and had four hours of uninterrupted quality time doing something fun with your child? On a scale of one to 10, how connected do you feel with each one of your family members? Do your kids or your business come first? I know these are very poignant questions, right? Hi, I'm Jay Teagues, high performance coach, leadership speaker, founder of the Do Hard Things podcast, and today I wanna to talk about connecting deeper with your children. I'm a single father of 13-year-old teenage triplet daughters. You know, a year and a half ago, they went through a divorce. We've been through the pandemic. They've been to two different schools. They've hit, you know, puberty and womanhood, and there's a lot of change in, in their life, and I'm noticing some changes in them. And I'm trying to figure out ways to connect with them. For me personally, like, I didn't have a father growing up. I didn't have that deep connection. And I'll be honest, when I found out I was having kids, it made me very nervous because I didn't have a good role model growing up. And so in an effort to not be like, you know, my father who wasn't there, I want to be engaged with my kids. But it's a, it's a struggle. I've never been a 13-year-old girl before. So how do we connect on a deeper level with our kids? Well, there's a great book on the topic. And in the, in the group that I run, The uh, Forge, the book of the month is called The Family Boardroom. I've got it on Kindle. Uh, it's a family boardroom meeting, and I want to give you maybe a quick book review and some actionable tips from this book so you can connect on a deeper level with, with your kids. Because it's in, you know, being a, a parent is one of the most difficult yet rewarding roles that we'll ever have in our life. And there's always things that we can do to be better. And I know for me personally, they're going through a very precarious time. So I'm trying to figure out how I can connect on a deeper level. This is the conversation that we're having in the Forge. And I want to give you some actionable tools and tips that you can use with your children so you can connect on a deeper level. So 85% of entrepreneurs admit that they don't spend enough quality time with their family, especially their, their children. And so what I'll have you consider is that intending to spend time with your kids isn't the same as actually spending quality time with your kids. There's no shortage of distraction. Like I'm sitting here, my phone's ringing. Like there's, there's no shortages of distractions that are out there. And as parents, you know, we're working hard to put food on the table and be there for everyone else. And oftentimes, and as I work with people and with clients, what we find is that our kids often get the breadcrumbs of us. And that we're, when we, when we kind of peel back the onion and we actually analyze our life and our habits, we're probably not spending as much time with our kids, intentional quality time with our kids as we could. So I wanna give you some tools and tips to help you with that. So time together is not the same as quality time together. And studies have proven that kids that don't have real connection with their parents are gonna be more likely to develop addictions. They're not gonna be able to maintain meaningful relationships. They're gonna have more anxiety and more depression. And so the boardroom meeting, which is what the book is about, a success action plan that you do once a quarter to block off four hours, four hours once every 90 days with your kids. And so words can never convey what time and consistency can. So it's important to be consistent with this and spend the quality time with your kids to connect with them on a deeper level. So true change takes place during special moments of connection with your parent and with the parent and the kid. And that's when real breakthrough happens when you have that intentional time and moments with your kids. The greatest human desire is to feel loved and appreciated. And true quality time can get that connection with your kids. And so the purpose of the boardroom is to track results, because you're going to do this on a regular basis, and reconnect the team, right? You and your family, you're leading your team. It's time to, you know, connect with, with the family. So there's basically three rules. Once a quarter, once every 90 days, every 12 weeks, you're going to spend one-on-one -on -one time with your child, okay? No electronics, no electronics, no screens. The only exception is you bring this, put it on airplane mode, and you take capture a photo. So it's good to capture a photo so you can, you know, have a memory with, with your kid about that specific boardroom meeting. But we're not checking it. We're not checking it for any reason. And we have to do an activity of your child's choosing. Your child gets to plan out the event. And you're going to be surprised at how creative that they get. So some principles, you know, that which gets scheduled gets done. So you've got to put the boardroom on the calendar. You've got to block out four hours 
of time for your child. And it sounds crazy that we're going to block out time for our child, but we block out time for our clients, we block out time for our boss, and oftentimes we don't block out the time for our kids. So we've got to block it, block it out. We've got to make it happen. Because there's no shortage of things that can come up and, and derail the boardroom. But the boardroom is something that's a priority. So we're going to block out time. And before you do the next boardroom, before the next one is over with, you've already got the next one on the schedule. So that's important. And in high performance, we teach, you know, 90-day intervals, 90-day blocks of time are incredibly important. We want to focus on various objectives in, in 90 days, in 12 weeks. And relationship goals should be one of them, right? So the next principle is anticipation. Anticipating the event, like nothing, happiness comes from planning vacations and anticipating the vacation can be almost as powerful, if not more powerful than the vacation itself. Because when you're doing something that you don't want to be doing or something that's in discomfort or uncomfortable, or you're having a bad day, you can anticipate having the vacation. Having the anticipation of a scheduled boardroom is also powerful for you and your child because your child's going to be looking forward to this as well. Next principle of the boardroom is reflection time. So when you're doing the boardroom, we're not lecturing the child. We should never lecture during the boardroom, but we're reflecting on, you know, what has happened over the last 90 days in your life and be truthful with them about what's going on in your life and what's going on in their life and sharing that time together. The next principle is four hour block is important for decompression. If you're familiar with Tim Ferriss, he talks about the four hour this, the four hour that. There's a, the four hour block of time has been proven to give enough time to decompress. So unplug from the world for your child and yourself. So you can kind of recharge the battery. It's a renewal activity. The next principle is the magnifying a glass. So you're going to get a closer look at your child's life. And in order to strengthen the entire family, you need to strengthen the individual parts. That's going to strengthen the whole, right? So by taking a component of your family out and spending time with them and focusing on their life, getting a magnifying glass uh, to take a look at their life and, and connecting with them, you're going to strengthen the whole family. So this is important. And this is also a time that we don't want to lecture, but maybe it's time to extend influence. We think about the influence model. You know, what we teach in high performance is influential people. They, they teach us how to think. They challenge us and they role model the way. And the persuasion formula, this is a time to also be able to maybe persuade is we acknowledge the individual. We acknowledge the challenges and the struggle that they have. And even their, you know, their victories. So we acknowledge and put ourselves in their shoes. And this is a time where you can kind of do a deep dive in their life and acknowledge the life that they have and some of the struggles and some of the accomplishments uh, that, that they've that they've had. We will also want to identify their ambition. So what are some of the things they're looking forward to? What are they excited about in life? And we want to be able to stoke that ambition. And then finally, in the persuasion formula effect, laying on some emotion. We want to tie in, you know, some emotion when we request something of someone. Like, why is it important to have, have that emotional effect? Okay. So most parents try to hurry their quality time with their kids by jamming it in between emails, between phone calls. They think that by taking the, the child to a sporting event is quality time. And it's, it's not. It's not. We need to feel the day more and, and get a, a deeper connected, a connection with our kids and blocking out time to do that. One-on-one -on -one time is the best way to connect and have quality time with your kids. And so children don't often want to bring up topics, uncomfortable topics, in a group setting. And so oftentimes when I ask people to have multiple kids, when was the last time you spent one-on-one -on -one time with your kids? That kind of, when they think about it, it's been a while. Because usually when you spend time with your kids, it's usually all the kids together. And it's a challenge. I've got three of them. So, you know, having one-on-one -on -one time, scheduling that time in is, is, it can be a challenge sometimes. So just to kind of rehash the rules, no electronics. In order to reconnect, you got to disconnect. And uh, these phones, I mean, they are really, they... You know, nothing makes you feel more unwanted or more disconnected when you're having a conversation and, they're, and the other person is scrolling, right? So we want to make sure that we're putting that person, our child, uh, showing them that right now in this moment that they're important to us. We're going to connect with them on a deeper level. So no screens. And this is not a time for movies. This isn't time to go to the movie theater or watch a movie together. Unplugged, no screens, no email, no text. The only exception, airplane mode taking a selfie to commemorate the moment. Focus reflection. Once again, not a time for heavy lecture. You, you've said plenty by just being there. 
And what we want to do is stoke their ambition, acknowledge them, and, you know, reflect, right? So thinking about what's going on in, in their life. We'll talk about some prompting questions. You know, my, my challenge to you is in the next 30 days, schedule a family boardroom meeting with your child. Four hours, uninterrupted, the child gets to plan something, no lecture, no electronics, and just in, in, in engage and reconnect with, with your child. So here's some questions for your kids or some things that you can prompt to, to have a conversation with them. What I would ask you to do is ask, ask your child or try to figure out what brings your child joy? What's bringing them happiness right now? What makes them happy at home? What makes them happy at school? What makes them happy in any other place that they're spending time? Maybe grandparents or church or maybe soccer or whatever other activities. So what, what's bringing them joy? What activities do they enjoy the most? What are they struggling with? What are they having a hard time with? Maybe a sibling, maybe a parent, maybe it's somebody at school. Maybe they're having a, a bully issue or some friction at school. So what are they struggling with and who are they struggling with? What are they excited about in life right now? What are they excited about in life right now? What are they looking forward to? Is a family vacation coming up? Are they having an activity that's coming up? But what are they looking forward to? I know something that I learned about my child, and I don't understand it, but they like um, these things called uh, the, the mangas. They are um, Japanese action novels. So it's like, uh, I think the proper term may be J Japanimation, and there are these graphic novels. And I don't quite understand it myself, but apparently Paige loves them, and she's been doing a lot of, like, drawing. And, like, it really, although I've been kind of teasing her about it a little bit, I'm trying to tease less and actually get connected and really understand why she likes them because I know that it makes her, uh, it brings her so much joy. And I've been taking her out and I've been more purposeful about, about buying them for her or creating opportunities where she can buy them. And I'm noticing in her artwork, she's, she's enjoying drawing them. And we, for their, uh, her last birthday, we got her some books to help her draw those better. And it brings her a lot of happiness. And I didn't really know that or understand it, but as I talk to her when we have our one-on-one -on -one engagements, I'm understanding more about it. And, um, I think it makes her happy when I'm inquisitive about it and I actually care about what it is that she's into. So that was something that was a, that was a recent revelation in the last year that I realized that she was into that. And uh, so here's some more questions. I got a list of 30 questions. And if you'd like those, email me and I'll shoot these to you. But if you wrote, here's some more questions. If you wrote a book, what would you name the main character and where would they go? If you could design a t-shirt, what would you draw or write on it? So these are open-ended engagement questions just to get to know your child a little bit better. What was your favorite part of your day or your school activity? Do you have any jokes to tell me? I got some, I got some really bad dad jokes, you know. But what jokes do they have? How would you describe a perfect day? If you, we could go to any of your favorite places, if you're your favorite place, but we couldn't use a car, how could we get there? These questions are designed to be open-ended to be engaging, right? Get to know your kid a little bit better. If you could change anything about school, what would it be? If you could eat lunch with your favorite person, who would it be and what would you have? If you could have any three wishes granted, what would they be? So these are just some examples of some questions that you could use in your boardroom to get some engaging questions. And like I said, if you, if you want the list, email me and I'll shoot you the list of 30 questions below. So in your next boardroom meeting, you can connect on a deeper level, have a deeper conversation with, uh, with your kid. I hope that this served you. Uh, this is the conversations. We have a book of the month every month in the, the group that I host called The Forge. I just thought that I would create this video because I think so many parents want to connect on a deeper level with their kids. And I thought that, hey, this, is, this book is a very quick read and it gives you just a simple, actionable plan that you can incorporate on a regular basis. And in doing so with my kids, it's given me a lot of insights into who they are and I'm able to connect with them on a deeper level. So I would love to hear about your family boardroom meeting. And if you want the list of questions, email me. And if there's any other tools or tips or techniques that you use, please comment below and uh, share with us, you know, what those are, because I'd love to, uh, I'd love to hear them. And if you're hearing this, because I'm also going to have the audio and this on the podcast, feel free to shoot me an email and uh, let me know what that is. So um, I hope this serves you. In the meantime, do hard things. We'll talk to you next time.